the perceptual reality monitoring theory and generative adversarial networks. The neural network models that we just described are all feed forward, as in they take input and pass that information in the bottom up direction. Turns out some modern neural network models are also capable of supporting top down processing. Sometimes we say that these models employ the strategy of predictive coding. While these models are powerful, training them often requires too much time and data. Remember that training here refers to the process of fine tuning the connections between the nodes in the network so that they end up doing the computations that we want them to do. One way to make predictive coding more feasible is to implement generative adversarial networks. To do so, we have to first set up a generative network making top down guesses or imaginations of visual input. And then we can have an adversarial discriminator network whose job is to tell if a visual representation is genuinely a real visual input or whether it was just made up by the generative network. We can set up the two networks to compete against each other. That is, the discriminator will get a point if it catches the generative network making up an input. And the generative network will in turn get a point when it fools the adversarial discriminator into believing that its output was real. This way, they can both be trained relatively quickly and efficiently. Given that our brains are capable of predictive coding, that is, top-down processing, it makes sense that we would have something like an adversarial discriminator too, since it would be very handy for metacognition. That is, we know that early sensory neurons don't only respond to external stimuli. As we know from class three, attention can change the firing of sensory neurons too, via feedback connections from higher areas. Sensory neurons are also activated by visual imagery, by just imagining the perceptual content. And when one holds visual content in working memory, the activity in the visual cortex is pretty similar to when you're actually seeing the relevant stimuli. So basically, working memory may require the DLPFC, but the content can be read out in visual areas as well. So given some early sensory activity, how does the brain know what that signal really means? Well, the adversarial discriminator is built to arbitrate cases like these. It can tell whether any given sensory activity is generated endogenously or whether it is triggered by an external input. A circuit like this can also probably tell us whether the sensory activity is just spontaneous noise. So having this adversarial discriminator is not just an engineering trick. It makes sense for us to have it. Now then, the perceptual reality monitoring theory puts all of that together. According to the theory, consciousness is determined by the output of something like an adversarial discriminator in the brain. In addition to having an adversarial discriminator, the theory also assumes that we have something called a rational thinking system. When the adversarial discriminator decides that the sensory signal is triggered by an external visual input, and then relays that information to the rational system, conscious seeing happens. This explains why when we consciously see something, it seems to make sense for us to believe in what we see. Because the adversarial discriminator tells our rational thinking that this is the right thing to believe. But the important point is that no matter what else you believe, when this adversarial discriminator decides that a certain sensory signal is representing the world as it is right now, you cannot reason that sensation away. The rational thinking system cannot ignore the output of the adversarial discriminator. This becomes reality as you consciously perceive it. Contrast that with blind sight. When one picks up on visual information unconsciously, even when one knows that one has the ability to guess correctly, the information does not present itself as something that's reasonable to believe. Philosophers sometimes say that it lacks esoteric force. When we consciously see something, we see it as happening out there, right now, in the world. So according to this theory, consciousness is not exactly the same thing as metacognition. But consciousness happens when a mechanism capable of metacognition interprets our sensory signals a certain way in order to tell our rational thinking system what to believe about the world. Consciousness is not a belief. It is how the outputs of your adversarial discriminator 
impact your rational thinking system, which in turn produces those beliefs. So you can choose what to believe after all. But this impact from the perceptual to the rational thinking system is automatic. It's not up to you. You can reason to choose what you believe, but you cannot reason away a subjective experience. Another cool thing about this theory is that it explains why we dream or hallucinate. They're the results of the adversarial discriminator basically making a mistake. It misclassifies noise or endogenously generated sensory activity as coming from the external world. In dreams, it feels as though the sensations meaningfully reflect the world in that moment. And even when you realize that you're dreaming, you can't reason away the subjective experiences.